Okay, so uh, today I'm going to speak about checking global identifiability. This is joint work with Hong Kong, Alexei Chinikov, and Chia. So uh, before I introduce the identifiability itself, let me show you just one example of a biological model. This is predator prey model. So uh, what does it mean? It means that like you have a forest, there are rabbits and wolves, and there are some natural interaction between them. And uh, how is this model constructed? So let x1 is number of rabbits, x2 is number of wolves. And you think that, OK, rabbits, they born new rabbits. And this, is, this rate is proportional to the number of rabbits. And each time that the rabbit meets a wolf, OK, rabbit might disappear. So uh, this, is, this, is, this is the second term. OK, so uh, then like modeler, uh, construct, constructs this model, he has this sort of reasoning, uh, but he or she doesn't know the values of corresponding parameters. And if you want to really apply this model to any predictions of future, you have to know these parameters, because yeah, otherwise it doesn't make sense. So uh, the question is, can we get them from some observations? And the situation is might be a bit more complicated if, for example, you cannot uh, measure x1 or x2. For example, rabbits are too fast and too small to count them, actually. So, uh, so it, for example, it might be that you can observe only x1 or only x2. And then you have a question, can I get these all numbers or no chance? So uh, this is actually more or less the general uh, identifiability question, how, how it's it. So you have kind of model, what's like... The, what's the answer there? Give an example. Uh, can you tell me what the answer is? I will tell later when I give yeah, definitions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, suspense. suspense. Suspense, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, some intrigue. So, okay. Uh, so the main question is you have this sort of model, and you know that you can measure some things and some you, you cannot. For that example, the answer is not obvious. Do you or do you not? Yes, for the previous example, uh, the answer is not obvious, and I, I will discuss it. So it's it's even a bit non-intuitive. So I, I will I will talk about that. So and you really want to, to somehow understand which parameters can you in principle find if you have noise-free accent measurements, and which parameters you just have any hope to find. Okay, so. Uh, and in this situation, I want to say uh, word parameters. Uh, as you have seen in the previous example, you have two kinds of parameters. Uh, one type is parameters that appear in equations and govern the dynamic, and another type is initial values. So if you want to model the situation, you have to know them both. OK, so. Uh, Why? Hmm? Why do you have to know? If you want to model the whole situation, I mean, you just want to know where to start. Well, if you, uh, it depends what you want to find out. Yes, of course. Maybe you are just in, in some certain parameter. It's, the situation might be different, but you, you, you might be interested in both them and them, in principle. Okay. So, but sometimes your interests are somehow restricted because like, you don't care about some things and you care more about other things. Yeah. But right. there are, what you're saying, actually, are you saying that there are frequent situations in which uh, everything has to be known. Yes, uh, okay. there are such situations. But not always, but... Not always. But these are important situations. Yes, yes. Then you w w want to simulate the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, correct. Okay, so uh, just to give some very s s simple toy examples, then like you have this uh, equation, x dot is equal to x plus k, then of course if you can observe k, uh, if you can observe x, you can find k. Obviously because like you can just write this and measure x and x dot at every point that you like, and that's it. And uh, to have example with the, of the model that is not identifiable, it's also it's, it's a bit stupid, but if your k is actually sum of two different k's, then you cannot just distinguish between them. So this is just because there are infinitely many possibilities. So I will give formal definition of more non-trivial examples later. Actually, our first example is much less trivial. Uh, so 
Could you could you do those all of the people who haven't seen this before? Ah, okay, sure, sure. Okay, so yeah, so in this situation, the second model uh, I can find from any for some measurements k1 plus k2 as one whole entity, but I can't distinguish them. I can just put, uh, take something from k1 and put it to k2, and observer will not notice that. So that plus one here, minus one here is the same, the same observed behavior. And so you're claiming that you can deduce it by just looking at this, but. Uh... What you're going to present uh, will address cases in which you cannot say that. Yes, yes. So this is kind of artificial example, just to first uh, yes, see, see the notion on uh, simple situation. But there are uh, very entangled systems. There, it's hard to predict what is actually identifiable. So, so and together, I K1 plus K2 would be what I was talking to you about that an aggregate variable. So you can determine K1 and K2. But you can give them the sum, and it's their sum that affects the outcome of the equation, the population. That's correct. Yes. So, and, 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 so and, why, and, do you, why do you want to separately determine K1 and K2 if you're only interested in what the systems do? Yeah, this is like, like see, uh, first you want to detect. Huh? I wish you came yeah, to I know, Yes, I know, yes. I know, yes. I know, yes. I know, it, 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 it was actually like, discussed yesterday by, by yeah. Nikki. Well, but in other examples, there are cases where you would want to distinguish, but in this toy okay. example, it doesn't really okay. make sense. Yeah. yeah, so, but anyway, before uh, try to find any remedy, you have to diagnose that you have a problem. Right. So, first you have to uh, find that you have such situation, and then you do change of variables, reparameterization, or whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But first you ho ha have to find that. Uh, okay. So this is also maybe the, uh, one of the easiest examples that can be explained without technicalities. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So, this is the reason. But it turns out, as you point out, this example serves several purposes. So, it's a really good example, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if it serves several purposes. <laughs> yeah, I would write K1 plus K2 plus K3. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Okay, so uh, before I give formal definition, I want uh, somehow to introduce with what kind of equations do I work, because uh, in the models that we have seen, uh, usually you don't have kind of complicated differential polynomials or such things, you have equations of very, very specific, but actually very wide uh, and express, expressive form of this form. So you have variables x, okay, x, y, and u and mu are all vectors, okay? Uh, so they're bold. So x is actually state variables that somehow uh, define the dynamic of the system and in general, you don't know them. Uh, what you know are y's that are observable output variables. So they might be some functions of the state. This, this is what you can really measure. And u uh, is an input, so maybe first, before doing any measurements, you can maybe apply some force on the, uh, to the system, the force you know and you choose, Okay, within some restrictions. So, uh, y's and u's, our friends, know them, and x's, in principle, are unknown. And so the total vector of parameters, it consists of two parts, of mu parameters that appear in dynamics here and here, and of initial values. So, uh, I will not uh, speak about input that much, almost everything that I will Okay, actually everything what I will talk about works with presence of input. Just to simplify the presentation, I will omit it in. So are you going to uh, talk about control theory then? Uh, control theory is uh, w one of possible applications of all these techniques. Not the other one. No, I mean... Be, I mean, the control theory, I've studied this kind of system. Yeah, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. But uh, in control theory, control again, control again, control again you, you have... And all that kind of thing, right? Yes, yes. So control theory is... is well, I mean, it's, it's... I mean they, they have used differential algebra already by the looking at transient degrees and... Yeah, yeah, sure. I, 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 I will mention this people from control theory. This is, this is... Yeah, but 
in, in, in some sense, this, this language, is, it's, it's very expressive. You can speak about control theory using this language, you can speak about biology, you can speak... So this is some general setup. And, would you repeat your question again? What was your question? Could you repeat your question? No, 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 no. See, the, no, no, there's, no, okay. there's no question. I'm just seeing ah, no the, the connection um, that people have studied these dynamic systems, but they don't call dynamic they, they, it's control system. Uh, you know, so, so the use are the inputs, for example, so it's observable. The y's are the outputs, so they're observable. The x is internal state, black box, inside black box. So they were expressed by this kind of equation. The, the y equation is uh, some kind of a constraint. Uh, maybe you want to feedback that. I mean, you could be also the y if you want to do feedback. And the way they do that in differential algebra, that was done by Fleas uh, in the 1970s. Right? And uh, so they use, so, so you put in this x, y, u, right? Um, and then you look at the, um, the transcendent, uh, a, a different transcendent basis, basically, to, to let's say, invert the problems. Uh, you know, they have um, input observation, I mean, observability, and that kind of thing that they study. Uh, I don't know whether this is, you know, connected to what you're saying. That's why I'm asking that. Well. So you had a question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And he gave you an answer. <laughs> Can you, are you going to do an example to show, like, given a, a system how what each of these variables are in that system yeah, next slide okay i hope yeah <laughs> so okay so we have a system exa exactly of this form we have only one x one y and uh three parameters so mu one and mu two and initial value of x so this is kind of when x is linear then y is also linear and this model uh, can be solved exactly. Just you can write the formula because linear function, linear function, and then you see that this example is L the brother of our earlier unidentifiable example because in your observed variable y, again, sum of two parameters occur, and again you don't have any way to split them. So this is a little bit more obscure identifiability. It, it might be even more obscure, uh, much more. So, but this is this equation is all the form we discussed. So, we have state variables, differential equations in terms of state variables, and then we have output y written in terms of state variables and parameters. So, Logan, uh, so you, you were proposing in that uh, uh, um, sort of easier example to replace k1 plus k2 with a new thing. <laughs> yeah. How would you, how would you uh, do it now? I don't follow your question, sorry. So, okay, let me repeat the question. Do, Repeating uh, doesn't help me. Okay, <laughs> uh, let me clarify the question. Okay. May I clarify the question? So, um, uh, well, um, do you, first, do you remember the example of K1 plus K2? Yeah, sure. Okay, and you made a proposal uh, right. to replace K1 plus K2 with something new, relatable. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. Okay, so Let's call it K. That. Okay, so this example has some similarities. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's why it has a sum of the parameters. Yeah, right. How would you act in this case? Now, in this case, uh, it, it actually explains why you don't want to uh, make them as an aggregate, even though even though the system behave, behavior won't change if mu2 plus x star don't change. But since mu2 and also x star has different physical meaning, mm -hmm. then you do want them separate. And when XR is an initial condition, condition, initial, how do you start? Whereas mu1 uh, is actually a, a rate. Um, in, in a sense, technically speaking, the two shouldn't be added together because they're different dimensions. Uh, Numerically, fine. I mean, you can, you can always have three plus four. But if three is a rate and four is a, a value, initial by population, then you should be able to add them. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> no, but I mean, if the initial system makes sense, then its solution also have to make. Then it, I mean, so mu two mu two is not a rate. You see, it's added to the. No, uh, it, mu two is x dot. That's a rate. No, no, mu one no, is no, no, no. Oh, the mu one. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, mu, mu two okay, is okay. sort of bias or okay, shift I, I, I or. I misread. Sorry about it. I misread. Right. 
Okay. Um, so, so they could be added. So yeah, they could be added. Sure. So is it a puzzle or is it uh, how to? Is it yeah, then, then you can yeah, then you can hold it together. So it's not possible to rewrite the system in such a way that yeah, because oh, sure, you can translate the variable. You just translate the variable by being two. Ah, so you make and, it a and put, that, put them into the uh, initial condition. Yeah. So uh, yeah, right. If you replace x plus mu 2 yeah. with x tilde, mm -hmm. yeah. then the system will be the same, but this is different change of variables that was previous. Different kind of change variables. D different kind of change variables, so... Well, no, it's, no, no, it's still an aggregate variable. The two together is still an aggregate variable. And a lot of systems, the whole idea is to use dimensional analysis to find as few aggregate variables to express the same system, in terms of behavior, not in terms of how many variables there are. And in terms of the algebra, you, you're really saying, um, you know, what what generates the solution, uh, the generic solution of the uh, differential field. And uh, yeah, so how how would you approach work in this case? Yeah, I would do exactly that. I would do a new change of variable with x plus mu two, but mu two is still unidentifiable. So I mean, it's it's like oh yeah, mu two is still of course, of course it is not identifiable. It's like the but as as yeah. far as mm -hmm. Let's say the numerical growth of x, right. it doesn't matter. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, thank you for discussion. So, and now, uh, positive example that actually will be, I, I will use this example throughout the next slide. So, uh, in this situation, x grows exponentially, and you observe x plus something, plus some shift. So in this situation, again, you can write a solution because, okay, you know that this ex exponential function and this is how does y look. And then actually using just this formula, you can find formulas for all three parameters. I will do it for you. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you can differentiate three times and then you see that y dot and y double dot different just by mu one. So the ratio at every point is mu one. And then you can find x star, but by measuring the derivative at zero. And then you can find mu two. I, I believe this is in control theory they call that the invertibility problem. That you can invert. Yes, oh, I mean, no. since this identifiability question raised in different fields, they have several names yeah. in principle. So I will stick to sure. word identifiability today, just not to... No, but the point is that, um, no, if what I said is correct, I'm not a control theorist, okay, but if mm -hmm. what I said is correct, then what you should do is to look at what people in control theory have done. Because they have used the control. Algebra. Yes, I, 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 I have looked, okay. and I will cite them in okay. several slides. Yeah. So far, I've just explained the definition. I, I, I didn't I have a chance to mention anybody. <laughs> okay. So I, I'm going ahead. Of... Yeah, yeah I, I will mention Fleece and, and Diop and yeah, these this good people. So uh, what I want to point uh, out right now is that all these formulas have denominators. So in principle, this nice scheme of finding parameters might fail mm -hmm. if some of the denominators vanish. So uh, what we'll talk today about is uh, identifiability in generic case. So generically, they don't vanish. So if you have like mu1 is equal to zero, it's very, very special generic case and your exponential growth is actually constant. So uh, Today we will speak about uh, what happens generically because, like this, uh, not the general situation in principle has probability zero. But I don't want to say that this is not interesting, not important problem. I mean, but, sometimes but, you just set some initial conditions and then you set them to generate, and this is an, another challenging thing. I just will not talk about today. I will talk about generic situation. You had comment? No, but but you see. Um, all you need to determine these three parameters is, in fact, at one single time, one point, one data point, right? Yeah, one data point is not point. It's more subtle than that. So if you are able... Well, of course, I mean, that, that varies. I mean, the measurement is not accurate. William, the, the, the derivatives, it's, if you can calculate the derivative at, at a particular point, uh, oh, yeah, point, so then great, yes. Of course, of course. Right. 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 
But you see, so if one wide dot, which is the right, you have one double dot, one wide dot, is it correct? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, if one wide dot at certain time is zero, but at other time is not, and the same, you know. Yes. Then yes. It would be okay. Oh, yes. Correct. So, so, you vanish, so you don't as a function, William. It's vanishing as a function. Ah, yes. Yes. I, I mean, as, as as a function. Right. Yeah. And actually, I mean, if mu one is zero, then the system is really unidentifiable because then yeah, uh, right. x is constant yeah. and mu two are constants, and you cannot separate them. Right. So this is really an issue. In this generic case, situation really changes. Right. Of course, the equation is different. But however, in practical problems. Uh, uh, knowing this generically is sufficiently interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's it's actually usually the case because all yeah. all, all quantities are not actually not mm -hmm. not exact uh -huh. and, and they okay. usually don't vanish your certain polynomial which is eliminated. So this this is what I said about probability zero principle. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so today I will speak about identity for generic parameters, and this is exactly the reason why I will do that because otherwise. Things really change, and this is really a bit different problem. So, uh, and here we are, we are at the for almost formal definition. So, I have this system, I take one of its parameters, theta sub i, and I, I will have actually two notions of identifiability, global and local. So, I will mostly use global, so you can, if you want, you can ignore local, but it's also interesting. So, it's a local, global identifiable. If uh, I have these two polynomials, let me explain what, what do they mean. Uh, this P of theta means actually uh, some polynomial that vanishes on all degenerate cases. And non zero polynomials. You pick non zero. Yeah, non zero. Yeah, I pick two non zero polynomials, of course. So, uh, like, if I can uh, identify such degeneracy loss, loss I for thetas, and some differential polynomials, a polynomial in use and their variables that somehow uh, captures degenerate inputs. So if I can find such, you haven't finished that thing, but yes, yes, I just, I, I, <laughs> I just, I, 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 I don't want to distract you by the uh, second part. <laughs> Are you sure it's, it's clear when, uh, unless you show actually because you, what I, you're saying is actually a little there, I think. Yes, I want to prepare you. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so if I can uh, find such two polynomials such that for every parameter vector that is not degenerate and every input vector that is not degenerate in this sense, so a value of this function at zero is on zero, then if for every such choice my y uh, corresponding y, I will say what this means in a few seconds, determines the value of this parameter uniquely. So, uh, because, wh what does it mean? Then you pick a parameter vector and you pick input, then uh, the behavior of state variables is defined because of the theorem from differential equations. The solution exists in unique in analytic functions at the point, and then y is also uniquely defined when you fix parameters and input. In some neighborhood, everybody is uniquely defined. So you have unique fun function y. And now, if uh, this function determines back the value of theta i uniquely, then theta i is globally identifiable. If it determines uh, up to a finite number of options, then it's locally identifiable. So you. So by the way, so f and g have, or f at least has constant coefficients. Yes, yes, I didn't say that yet. F, 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 f. The non-constant thing is hidden on u. Yes, yes, f and, f and g have constant coefficients, and uh, if you have non-constant coefficients, you can, okay, you can hide them in d different ways, actually. You can hide them in x principle. Yeah, okay. So, yes, uh, I, I assume constant coefficients right now. So why do you choose this as a definition for uh, identifiability? Uh, I, I wouldn't say that this is my choice. I, I identify. I, well, I mean, you presented it, so it's your. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's. It, I mean, it's. I, the, yeah. The, the point is, I don't see intuitively why this definition 
says that these, this particular parameter will satisfy these conditions is actually identifiable. Okay. Yeah, but uh, it will take a theorem to prove that. But no, you see, it, but you see, you are defining, but you see, you are defining identifiable using this method, mm -hmm. using this definition. So I want to see that that is intuitive. So we okay. explain slowly. Yes. Point in for, hour, example, for, exa for example, maybe you will give an example. Are you going to give an example? I will discuss examples. So, uh, but um, uh, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will, see, you gave, you gave some very simple examples earlier mm -hmm. where some variables are identifiable in one case and the other one mm -hmm. is not. Now, would that satisfy this kind of condition? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, so yeah. Uh, yeah. First, first, may I uh, maybe. Uh, uh, rephrase what's written here. Okay. Would you, would you go back uh, to examples? Yeah. Would you uh, actually the request here? So you request okay. Example, so uh, this this was one slide more mm -hmm. because it shows the system. system. That's the easiest ah. one. <laughs> the one that's not. That's yeah, not yeah. But so just I wanted I wanted to use formulas. Okay. So uh, so yeah. This is the system. Yeah. Okay. Which one do you want to win first or second? Well, you see, to prove something is not identifiable is very hard according to that definition. But you have to show that for so every no, p, no. For every p and every q, uh, the, some of them failed. Yes, yes. So, uh, yes. To, to show Pro something is identifiable according to that number is to produce a p and a q. Right? Yes, yes. Which is, in some sense, easier because you can show. Okay, which one do you want to discuss now? So, I like, I like first of all to see the one that is identifiable. Okay, so okay. could you explain this? Okay, so here, uh, in this example, this we, don't, we don't have input, okay? Okay. We only have parameters, okay. and for p from definition, I choose. Can you write here? Go what, is, what is y from the definition? Y? Y from the definition is y. No, no, no. the one that uh, you used in the definition. Ah, so yeah, it's okay. So uh, it's the y that you wrote uh, in, uh, the last line. Yeah. That's so the right from uh, the yeah. Uh, every set of parameters, I mean one, or two, and x, x, yes, x star, they define y. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have a map from parameters to y, and I want to know if I can go back. So if I can see in y, understand what parameters were. So, so the, the, do you confirm that the y that is written on the last line is the same y that appears? Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, there's a solution. Yes. There's a solution. It is a solution. See, the, the problem is identified. I mean, the reason why it's identified is because of the uh, linear dependence of the exponential function than one. Yes. In some sense, uh, this is the reason. Right? I mean, you, 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 you get two points and then you can solve them. Okay, so. But, but you see, so, but how does this being identifiable for u1 and u2 fit into your definition? That's what I want to know. Yes, in, uh, for my definition, uh, uh, I, I, I take that polynomial p to be just mu1. So I. What was p? Uh, p that, that says what uh, choice of parameters I degenerate. So mm -hmm. for every choice of parameters such that mu one is not zero, oh, you want to use uh, that mu one. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So uh, my p of that in this situation is just mu mu one. Sorry. So for every choice of parameters, then whenever mu one is not zero, uh, I claim. So yeah, so yeah, okay. the octet, yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I claim that uh, knowing uh, knowing function y. Oh, I see. Function y is enough to find values. Find the values. You want? Do it. X star. And William, uh, not just uh, this is the case, it is what uh, a modeler would actually accept as a, as a definition. Uh, yeah, this is. Uh, the question is based on measurements, can we uniquely find mu1, mu2, and x yeah. So why, why, is, why isn't that the definition? This is precisely what's written there. No, no I don't understand the example. I don't no, understand the example. Knowing why, yeah. know, knowing why is what is measured. Yes. By knowing why, can you find mu1, right. mu2, and x star? Yeah, and, and I understand why. I just pointed it out that it was because of the independence of the two functions, oh, one and the exponential no, function. No, no. The, the, the reason why this is correct, why you can find, is a mathematical question uh, about algorithms. 
or about some theory, you're asking about the definition. So right. first, you, let's address your question about definition. Right. Your question about the definition was, why is this a natural definition? Do you confirm that this was your question? Yeah. Okay, so uh, he justified this by, well, he explained it by uh, giving a concrete example, and we added the oh, okay. so, 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 you, so, so, so what you're saying is that the definition is a sufficient condition for that you actually can identify the variables. Is that correct? Because you, no, have no. Because the, you have a theorem. What do you mean you can identify the variables? I'm not sure. The definition says what the definition says, says that you can identify so the variables. So Let's, my question is, is there an alternate definition that's equivalent to what you, just, what you define here? Oh, there are plenty of alternative definitions. No, I'm sorry, equivalent. There are many equivalent definitions. Okay, good. A logic, you know, in logic, you modify something that is a change of formula. No, 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 I don't equivalent. mean that. I mean, I mean, you, do, you said you can solve for the variable. You can, you, you can plug in a few points and you can find the, the, the value of these, uh, esti estimate these parameters. Yes, okay. so there is an algorithm. Uh, that, uh, but, that, but that's what you introduced me to say you, what is identified. Not, please not interrupt. I, I'd like to answer your question. So there is an algorithm yeah. that will, if and only if this holds, will provide, after some computational time, actual expressions of, of the parameters. Of the parameters in terms of the other thing. In terms okay. of... So that's why it's... It if and only if you're saying. Correct. Okay, fine. But, but that's, that's fine. Then that's how, fine. However, um, uh, for, for, as far as we understand from the modeler's point of view, this is the main definition and not uh, a definition through an algorithm. So if you yes. have a theorem that's even only if, sorry, then why don't you state this as a theorem and then define that, say condition one and condition two are equivalent, and then if they satisfy that, we call it identifiable. Because, uh, so uh, it's not stated that way, because psychologically it's more correct to state it this way. Why? Uh, it doesn't make any sense to you. It doesn't have to make sense to you uh, to be psychologically correct uh, to, and to be beneficial for the community. But, but what so, is wrong if you do have an even only theorem to first state that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are equivalent? And then if you said that any of this, it's quite identifiable. Uh, okay, let me I'll, I'll answer your question. That's the best way to prove to the theorem. Incorrect. Right. Uh, because. Uh, your style. The, the okay, same. I'm not going to argue your style. Okay, fine. Can I ask a question? Fine. Yeah. So it looks like in this definition, mm -hmm. say you want to show the primary data I is identifiable. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't rely on any of the other parameters. Is that true? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. So uh, you can identify it regardless of what. You, can you identify other parameters on, on that? Okay. Kind of. so, 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 then, so then in the previous example, in order to say identify um, next star or mu, mu, mu two, say, in that example, you needed to first know what mu one was. I mean, the way how do you proceed? I mean, so uh, do I understand right that you ask uh, why my uh, the way I wrote formulas relied uh, on, 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 on the previous parameters? Right. Yes? Yeah. No, so, this is just a way I show the identifiability. Right. So it's, 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 it's a way of... So there's a way of... of you can make right. a substitution. Yes. You can make a substitution. Oh, sure. Right. Yeah. So the, the, yeah, the, 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 there is a way to access directly mu2. Right, right. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Now... Um, and uh, let me just... Uh, so for, uh, Richard raised a very good point because in, for example, this example, the parameter mu1 is identifiable. So the whole model is a bit ill, but the parameter mu1 is healthy. It's, you can find it. And the definition applies to the situation. So it says that nothing is that bad. Now, now I, okay. uh, Richard actually prompts me for another question. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's go back to your definition. Okay. Okay. Now, from what I see here. Oh, one by, the, by the way, this definition is not sort of rigorously finished, uh, no, read, written with all details. So he doesn't, again, say what y is uh, on the slide. So what do you mean he didn't say what y is? Yeah, so he's, he, he talked through it, but he didn't explain it on the slide, what y is. Yeah, but what, y is a solution of corresponding differential equation yeah. that exists because of the theorem of existence and uniqueness. Yeah, I, I know that. Right. Okay. Okay. I know that you're using implicit function or implicit or the other. But, uh, okay. 
Now, I, I like to ask you the last two lines. Is that a conclusion or is it part of a definition? It's a part of the definition. If the corresponding y determines the value uniquely, then I say that it's globally identifiable. So, so the such that has two points, well, actually have three points, is that how I should be reading it? Or what? The points are no. quantifiers. The, well, these bullets are quantifiers, and this is formula. So mm -hmm. for every, for every happens. Can you write down maybe ah. the formula uh, actually as we will work okay. on the paper? All right, that's better. And that's better. Okay. Do you want me to write the formula? No, 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 no. Okay. I, I so, so you see, why I'm asking, which was wrong with me is that, see, the 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 identifiability suppose is supposed to depend on the system, and if you if I just look at the first two conditions, that does not. Then, but you're saying that that's the hypothesis, so that the conclusion has to have, and the whole thing is identifiable. Yeah, there is three the, the, okay. where you're looking oh, at. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So this is this, these are quantifiers for every every so, something. So, so that means that. Okay. All right. Well, I have searched through many different ways of stated. No, 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 no. I want to understand what it means. Yes. Okay? So okay. now I have a better understanding. Thanks. All right. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's that's great. That's, that's really great. That's, that's great. So, so I mean, see, I was missing the tie. If I just look at the two conditions such that because it looks, of course, but it is such that if for every day, then this. It's just for like a logic, okay. like such no, that. No, no, okay. No, no. I, Can you I write on the formula. Yeah. For, formula. No, I, 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 I think the way settled on this, this point. Yeah, just maybe, maybe the structure of slide was a little bit misleading, so I just wanted to avoid a large mass of, of plain text, so I wanted to structure this somehow. And no, this no, structure. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. So the, what is really written is that for almost every, for every, for almost every theta, for almost every u, uh, then, and then what happens? The I and can you write this formula? What it means? It's you can be um, yes, yes, no, or the finite. Uh, oh, I will have to introduce this. Okay, so, 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 okay. so uh, that the I can, can be read from and read from was measured in host. There is a way to formally state it. Yeah, yeah, so this is this is in the paper. Was this is a, a bit informal phrase, of course, like in, in the paper, we say that. Rigorously, just just to avoid the explosion of the definition. It's possible, and it's not super complicated. Yeah, yeah, it's just some words about functions and, and equations. And the point that, that this type of definition to the rest of our search through a big search of the literature mm -hmm. is uh, is what uh, a modeler would intuitively also think that this is what it is. Mm -hmm. And um, from mathematician point of view, and from the algorithmic point of view. Uh, once no, no. We, we see that we get stuck using the definition, we, no, no, I so we'll develop some theory okay. to address it. Now I understand it definitely that much better, and I understand uh, why it makes a little sense or why it's determinable, uh, identifiable because of the last line. Okay, and I wasn't clear about that. I was just reading kind of the two things because that was the such that, and I didn't, and I thought that was a conclusion. Rather than that's also one of the properties of being identifiable in the definition. So that last line actually captures identifiability. Indeed, yes. Not, yes, not, not the two points mm -hmm. there. No, no, two points are just quantifiers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, so. Um, okay, th th there are different ways to establish identifiability and non identifiability. So for local identifiability, that means that you uh, cannot, maybe you cannot find the value of the parameter uniquely, but you have just a finite number of options. There are fairly uh, efficient algorithms based on computational Jacobian matrix. They go back to some late 70s by Hiram Trainer, and uh, later they were refined and implemented by Sadoglavich and some other authors. So uh, the, I will not speak a lot about local instability because algorithmically this question is more or less solved. 
and, and because this measured computation is quite cheap. Just implicit function theory. Yeah, just implicit function theory, so you can do it without for large systems without much problems. Mm -hmm. So uh, instant thing is global in Fabulity, and this differs dramatically. So uh, there are actually a bunch of methods uh, what, that address this problem for in some situations and cases. So uh, uh, historically, one of the oldest methods is Taylor series method. I will not go into details. Uh, it somehow looks on power series expansions of all these functions. Uh, and the uh, issue is that in general, we don't know how far should you expand them. So uh, the method relies on certain bounds. And to the best of our knowledge, the, there are no general bounds. There are bounds only in some cases. And in these cases, they are sometimes exponential. This is a bit painful for computation. So it's uh, we, we haven't seen any implementation of this method. So it's as well. As, as well. So it's uh, relies on these bounds that are not that complete. Uh, and there is a whole family of algorithms based on differential elimination. And this was actually initiated by this. Uh, control theory people, the Fleece and their co-authors, and then brought to the other communities and developed further. So this is, I, I, I could feel the whole slide of people who contributed in this, this area of research. So I mentioned some, just the earliest. Uh, uh, one, one short question. Mm -hmm. Is the condition on the Jacobian matrix uh, one of what you just call finite options? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, this this is what they call fine, fine options. This 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 is checked by Jacobian matrix. So okay. Rank of it is. Yes. Yes. Rank of it is full or something. yeah. Constant rank of it. Okay. So uh, so uh, I want to give a small overview of these differential elimination approaches. So uh, roughly speaking, you can divide them in two different uh, parts, uh, depending on how do you think about parameters. So first part, and historically it, would be, it is the first, is the following. So let's just return to our system with exponent and shift that we already have seen. Uh, what they say, we say that uh, let mu1 and mu2 be also functions, but constant functions. So they say that they are functions, and add two new equations. mu1 dot is 0, mu2 dot is 0. So in this situation, we have just okay, so one, two, three, four differential equations. And now we can uh, do differential elimination, compute characteristic set. I will not go into details. There's some, there's some sort of algorithm, so the algorithm, algorithm that computes certain representation of an ideal defined by these equations. And uh, it's even that y dot is non zero, is non zero function. So it's even some non degeneracy condition. We have only one characteristic set, and I wrote on the part of it, and this part actually gives almost the same formulas I wrote already. Mm -hmm. So you can just see these three polynomials mm -hmm. as linear equations in x, mu1, and mu2, and you can express them. So, and now you can deduce global defiability because you have formulas, then it's global identifiable. If you don't have formulas, it's a bit more tricky to explain why it is not globally identifiable, and uh, we haven't seen full rigorous proof yet, so didn't find on, 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 the, on the sketched proof. So, uh, but okay, anyway, th this method works like that, and there are some possibilities to tweak, to speed up it, uh, but the point is that it is still very slow, even for modest size uh, equations, there are, I would say there are, okay, let me and point by, it. By, by the way, so, mm -hmm. um, just to maybe possibly explain uh, why it could be slow. Yes, yes, I will give some reasons right now. Uh, you, you, you yeah, I, I was going to explain this. Okay, so could you please explain? Yeah, yeah, so, uh, uh, one reason is why it's slow, it's that you, you uh, quite recently enlarge the number of variables, so all your parameters are now variables. It's not very convenient for the Feldgrubner algorithm at all. And uh, another reason is that the Feldgrubner algorithm actually computes much more th that you really need, because I have this dot, dot, dot here. 
I will not use it. And this, this is the rest of the characteristic set. And it might be actually much larger than the part I will really use. But, but not just that, uh, that there are extra terms, but also the first terms give you expressions. Yes, yes. And, and that's, sometimes the customer doesn't ask for expressions. The, uh, it's interesting to know the expressions for some problems. For some problems, they're just not needed. So the uh, uh, question is maybe can that be avoided? So you see, so that's uh, yes, this automatically computes more, more and more. So this is this is good if you really want this results, but sometimes and quite often you really don't don't care much. Well, in, okay. in general, you probably can get formulas if the mu one, mu two, and I mean the parameters appear nonlinearly. Okay. But you're asking about global identifiability, yeah, so yeah, they, they will be linear. Yeah. What? They will be linear expressions. Right. If they're global identifiable. Yes, okay. they will. Look, look, look. If instead of mu2 in your y equation, I say I have mu1 times mu2, whether it's sense or not. Okay. I mean, when, when, you, when you have a system of differential equations and you compute uh, characteristic set, there's no guarantee that variables appear linearly. Uh, no. Uh, uh, there is a theorem that says that global identifiability is equivalent to having to, appear, to linear appearance of oh. variables. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's uh, I mean, okay, I would well, say the that this. The definition will require that I can solve. Correct, but it's, it yeah. turns out to be equivalent. Yes, it, 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 it's equivalent. Solving has to be. Uh, Okay. Yeah, so we haven't, well, we haven't, we haven't seen full proof well, of this we, theory, we know, but... We know that 50 degree equation can have a formula to solve it, right? <laughs> so how can you so tell me that you can always solve it? Well, it's, no, we, we, we don't. Well, so you, you can read the proof and see. And see. Oh, okay. Well, but, you, you can't, but if you can't explain how you can actually solve 50 degree equation... That's okay, but it doesn't apply here. Well, then that's why. So uh, I like to ask why. Why does 50 degree equation come well, out? Well, maybe you'll invite him for another talk in which he will explain the proof. No, no, I don't, I don't want to read your proof. I want you to understand why 50 degree equation no occur. Uh, if you can give us example that it will occur, we will oh, no, no, pleasure no, no, consider no, it. No, you, the burden is on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he can decline to answer your question. Okay, fine. That's fine. Accept it. Okay. Okay. So this this is this is the first first subfamily of this differential elimination algorithm to treat uh, uh, parameters as variables as differential variables. Another approach is to say that uh, they are actually coefficients. So we do some differential algebra over the field of rational functions. Okay. Uh, in we one and two. I've asked the question. The, the previous slide. Suppose I replace mu2 and write mu3 mu to the fifth power. It will not be global identifiable. Why not? Because, because, because you have to take the fifth root, right? Yes. Because there are only five roots. But this, uh, so this is local identifiable. Ah, you want unique. Unique. Ah, see, that explains why. <laughs> okay. You see? Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, and. I mean, because it's unique, so you can't have 50 degree version. Yes, this is what's written in my definition. Or if it's 50 degree, it's your factor. So well, no, not only that, you can't. You have, no, actually, this is still unique because it's a repeated root. Pardon? It's a repeated root. I have mu3 to the fifth power. Mu3. So it's still unique, right? Where is mu3? It's still no, unique, it's, 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 still, it's unique but it's only in degenerate situation, then this mu3 to the fifth power will be equal to zero. No, no, no. Mu3. Where's mu3? Ah, okay. All right. Mu3 to the fifth would be mu3 unique, mu3 but not mu3 itself. So. Ah. Good. Another question. But so, but there are situations in which that happens. So, uh, right? I mean, you get a formula for mu mu3 to the fifth power equal to something. Yeah. Yeah, but this is not global and final case. This is a case that, that can be made global and viable after parameterization, but this is another story. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. So, that, so then you can determine then if parameters are not globally identifiable 
using this method also by saying if the, if you get them nonlinearly. Yes, yes. So if 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 uh, you don't have this linear uh, polynomials, then it's not global and definable. So when you say global, what kind of range do you allow your your parameter space be? Shift them. Huh? Uh, the whole thing. The whole uh, space the whole, or complex numbers. The whole view of complex. Uh, 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 subtracted uh, a closed subset. Yeah, subtracted a closed closed yeah, degenerate subset. Closed constants. Okay, good. So, and the second idea, yeah, is to consider parameters as coefficients. And again, now, now you have just two equations, and you can compute characteristic set again. And uh, I will not write the whole thing. I will just write one polynomial there. Uh, uh, elements of characteristic set that doesn't contain state variables. Uh, in this approach, I usually call input-output equation. <coughs> okay, because we don't have... Uh, input in this example is actually output equation. Uh, so this formula doesn't give you a way to immediately write what is mu1 equal to. Equals to. Yes? So, but then uh, you can say that uh, assume that I can measure these two coefficients. Like if uh, y dot and y are somehow independent in some sense, then I maybe can measure these coefficients. And if I can measure them, I know mu1, and they can express mu2. So I... I could, you, uh, uh, could you explain? So uh, first of all, what, you, you, what you're presenting is not your result, right? Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's existing yeah. methods. Yes, I explain some family of approaches that compute characteristic set or something similar. There are also options. Can you just explain in some detail? Or yeah. So, Vaguely yeah. Okay. Them. So, uh, how how does this method proceed? They compute uh, such a polynomial that doesn't uh, include axes, doesn't include state variables. Then they assume that coefficients of this polynomial can be measured. And so, if they can be measured, then the next step is to check if you can find formulas for for mu's from the coefficients. Like in this situation, I can find formulas for mu1 and mu2 from coefficients. Because mu1 is a coefficient itself, and mu2 is a ratio of two coefficients. So uh, two things are important here is that I use certain assumption, and I don't touch uh, initial conditions. So I, I, now I speak only about mu1 and mu2. So yeah, so the, the, this, is, this is the outline. You compute equation, and then take the coefficients and try to express your parameters in terms of these coefficients. Now, you, the example here, I don't know how, I mean, it is an example, so um, it, you do have nonlinear terms, but each, each parameter is linear. Is that what you mean? No, I can express parameters as if uh, I can express mu1 and mu2 as a rational function in these polynomials. Are you talking about triangular systems then? You uh, for, check... For uh, parameters? Pardon? For the parameters, you get a triangular system? You can do it using triangular system. system. So there was an algorithm to answer that question, right? Yeah, so you, you just check that and you have certain freedom. You can use triangular system, you can use governor basis, maybe you can use something else. It's, okay. mm -hmm. it, it's details and they, they, they differ in different, mm -hmm. for different authors. Yeah. It, it, is, it is a family of algorithms, not just one. Okay, so uh, this approach uh, is in many cases faster than previous one because you take less variables in terms of Feldgrobner and you take give him less equations. So this this is supposed to work faster. There is this second stage, but you somehow divide the problem into stages. It usually helps in, in computation. Uh, however, the uh, there are still some issues here. One is that Rosenfeld Grobner still computes more than they want. So you still get certain formulas and you still get other elements of characteristic set that you were not interested in. And the second issue is that this uh, assumption that coefficients can be really measured uh, fails in some situations. I just want to show you one of them. This will look 
a bit artificial. I will explain later what, what does this example mean in, in, in more general context. So this is a system of form that we consider. We have only one state variable, and this is constant. And we can observe this constant, and we can observe some linear combination of, of some linear function of this constant. So then this input-output equation will be of this form, because you can just substitute y1 instead of x here, and it will get rid of, get rid of x's. Okay, so, and now the assumption is that you can measure coefficients, and the coefficients are actually our parameters. So the method would yield that mi1 and mi2 are identifiable. But actually they are not, because let's just uh, analyze the system, because this is, there are no functions that are just constants. They are not identifiable, because uh, you can take any value a for mu1. And then for mu2, you can you just compute this number. So you take different a's. For mu1, this formula gives you valid values for mu2. And you have infinitely many of them. So, so this assumption about the observability of uh, coefficients of input-output equation is a bit subtle point for this method. Uh, and so what does example mean? What kind of situations does it capture? Where, where in your definition on identifiable involve any choice of y1 and y2? Could you repeat this? Where in your definition on identifiable parameters mm -hmm. did you say for any choice of y? I say for any choice of parameter. No, ah, but okay. no, you wrote for any okay, choice so of y1 and y2. Ah, okay, so. So, so he's commenting using some equivalent statement. Uh, he would also express this non identifiability using his definition. Perhaps that's a good point to express it. Uh, um, expressing uh, would uh, amount to solving the system and showing. So you're inverting, you're already inverting the input output. Is that correct? You're, you're now thinking of y1 and y2. So and so he'll, he'll just write down by, by the definition of why this is, doesn't work. Yeah. It's possible to write in different ways, mm -hmm. but uh, since we didn't state the theorem, uh, yeah. actually, so, uh, and we, all we have is the definition, then let's just argue by definition. So it's, this is intuitive argument, okay. so far because there was no theorem. So yes, yes. yes. so in order to check this by definition, uh, let's say that if you have fixed some parameters. So what is y? Uh, y what is y? Uh, y one and y two. Yeah. So in this, in, in terms of parameters, y one and y two can be expressed because we can just solve this we'll equation. Write, we'll write uh, y one is just x star; it's constant, and y two is mu one x star plus mu two. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, now, uh, I assume that we picked some values of x star, the 1, the 2, okay? So we have values of y1 and y2. Mm -hmm. And now I take any other value a for mu, for, for mu uh, and I take value y2 minus a y1, so where was this found from the here, here is still, so I replace this as with some value a, I replace this with uh, y2 minus a y1. And could you write it not involving y2 and y1 so that William doesn't get upset? Yes, yes, I, I, I will do, do it in a moment. So if you, you just... understand what you mean. You actually write down mu, mu1 x1 plus y. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus mu2. Yeah, so this actually will give you... Okay, y2 is this expression, y1 is actually a star. So they cancel. Yeah, they, they cancel and you see that it's actually equal to y2, to right. the same y2. Same y2, yeah. Okay. And since it didn't change x star, that y1 is unchanged. So for any, for every a, you get new, new set of parameters. Yeah. 
So, and uh, here we also ha have say some words that for any uh, of these set de degenerate parameters, you can avoid it. So, so you yes, you think this example while is a uniqueness? Yes, mm -hmm. because it's not unique. You because think we, we it's something, to... and then you can take a new one. Because... Right. Okay. Okay. Let's just answer your question. Um, I think the idea is that. You hear you're saying for any choice of y1 and y2, but really what you mean is you're given y1 and y2. That's that's part of the no, original. No, no, that, that's no. that's observed. No, no. no. And what, then, what, no, what he's saying is that y1 and y2 as functions of the parameters is given like that. So think of mu1 and mu2 and x star as variables. Okay. Now you can pick a particular x star zero, and the mu one zero, and the mu two zero. That determines y one and y two already. Yes, that's correct. And then if you put it in there by varying a there in that formula, you actually get a different mu one, and a different mu two, and a different x two. Right. So they're not uniquely determined by the y one and y two. Right. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes, yes. This is how the definition should be checked, yes. Right. OK? It violates unique. Yes, almost, almost like uh, it's amazing that you violate uniqueness in a linear situation. Yeah, so uh, this the, like uh, somehow underlying reason for uh, this violation is that our system has some conserved quantities. So, because you have, you have uh, in, in language differential algebra, you have new constants. And like from differential Gula theory, you know that new constants is always kind of headache, and and this is what what where this headache appears in, in this context actually quite quite unexpectedly. So, uh, so this is the assumption might violate in the presence of cons conservation laws in the system. So so actually this. So, so I, I just want to understand this. Ah okay. Yeah please. So actually the the reason why it's not unique is because you have two equations. Say y1 and y2 is given. I mean, you know, observe, but you have three unknowns. So that's why you can't have a unique solution. You know, you have, you don't have enough equation actually. Yes, I don't have. <laughs> okay, yeah, this is this is another way to check that this is actually non identifiable So, so because of the uniqueness condition, you must have as many equations on y as there are parameters. Uh, at, least, not, at least. Okay. No, I mean, in principle, in principle, you have infinitely many equations on y because you can differentiate this until you are completely tired. I mean, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't, I don't mean there are unique system. I mean, in every system where you can use the y's to determine the parameters, They have to be uh, as many. I mean, it, it has to be. Um, well, how do we express the fact that the system has only a finite, a, a unique solution? If they're not linear, or, or, or. <laughs> but that's what it is. But you said it's linear anyway, eventually. So in terms of linear, then you just simply have to say that the determinant is not zero. Okay, so you don't have any question. Yeah. Yeah, but if it's not linear, I, I don't know how to express the fact that a non-linear system has a unique solution. We can check which, it. Which, which means that the variety you find, I mean, the, the, the para, in, in the parameter space, the variety that we find parameter space is one single point. Yes, it happens. So so what's the condition on that? It's, not, it's not only a is hard it, I problem. Zero, is I mentioned zero, but it's also far more than that. It's a hard computation problem to check that. I will speak about it. Okay. I hope. So, uh, okay. So, uh, in what situation are we right now? Uh, right now, uh, we don't have a general algorithm that works with guarantee and with reasonable speed for global infallibility. What do you mean we don't have? <laughs> uh, I and my co authors. Uh, okay, so no, uh, like a uh, couple of months ago, we didn't have. <laughs> we didn't have. We didn't have. Yes, yes, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, we didn't have. So, and now I would like to present how do we approach this problem. So, 
Um, I will use so still. You, you will explain roughly. But uh, yes, I will. I will I also roughly because I will emit some data. I will emit all inputs. They don't really make situation much more complicated, and I will show you the how it works on some example. This one actually. So uh, this this example that we already have seen expo exponential and and shift, mm -hmm. and uh, you're going to take the equation for y and start differentiating it. And each time, like differentiate one time, mu two disappears, and you have x dot. And you say, mm -hmm, I have an equation for x dot that express x dot in terms of mu and x. So I don't allow x dot to appear in some sense. I immediately replace it. Then I differentiate one more time. Again, x dot appears. I again replace it. So uh, after I do this. I will have infinitely. infinitely many equations of the form certain derivative of y is equal to a polynomial in mu1, mu2x. So geometrically, this is a map from C3 to C to the infinity. OK? So I map every triple mu1, mu2x to the whole bunch of derivatives of y. In general, you have S parameters and you have several outputs. So, so in the same way, you can obtain a map from C to the S from your parameter space to certain infinite dimensional affine space. So uh, this is almost algebraic context. So you have polynomial maps. Polynomial maps are algebraic objects. So uh, they're a bit, a bit infinite, but We'll uh, deal with it later. So uh, what I want to say that uh, we want to reformulate to give equivalent definition in terms of this map, without involving analytic functions in differential equations and so on. So, and there is. So this is equivalent definition, in some sense. So or it's a way to check the global identifiability using this geometric picture. So the parameter is globally identifiable if all elements of this set have the same i component, what is this set? Could you slow down and let it read it? So phi, phi, phi is my map from parameters to y's. And this set, inverse phi of phi of p, is actually the set of parameters that will generate the same y's, roughly speaking. So, and what I say that uh, for every such parameters, so like, like those. Yes, like those. So I have th th uh, this, this, this different choices of me one and the two will be actually this, this inverse, this range. So, and I say that parameters doubly identifiable if for every element in this pre image I have the same value of this parameter. So I can. Oh, pardon? Um. We have this room for a class. At, at 45? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, it's not a confusion. We, we okay. have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fine. not trying to. It's fine. Yeah, okay, okay, I will, I will we, finish we, by that. We can always continue a little bit in the afternoon if we have time. No, I'm, yeah, okay, so okay, let's. let's okay, so this, this is the reformulation in this geometric language of, of the, our initial definition. And this is equivalent. Uh, the problem is that we have uh, infinite dimensional spaces, we cannot work with them constructively. Okay, so we would like somehow to make the situation finite, finite dimensional. So how can we do that? Uh, if you have such map to infinite dimensional space, we can truncate it. We can throw away components that correspond to two high duties of y. What do you mean we can truncate it? Yeah, we, we can construct uh, uh, starting from this map and taking some tuple of non-negative integers we can construct a polynomial map within finite dimensional spaces from our initial map, just ignoring some coordinates of, of the image. I, I don't understand the quantifiers here. Yeah. How is h quantified? For, For every phi and every h. So you don't find? Uh, no, I don't find. For every h, for every h, for every h, I can construct such a map. 
And this is kind of finite reduction of my big map. And what I want, I want to find age such that this reduction will not lose any important information so that I can use this age instead of the whole infinity. And this is, this is actually next theorem. So I find age, any maximal age, such that this truncation is surjective. And I do one more step. And then make one more step. And then this truncation carries enough information to uh, make a decision about the infability. So I can replace phi in the theorem in the previous slide by this one. And there is an algorithm to calculate this. Yeah, uh, yeah. There, there, there's an algorithm. I, I was, I will say about the algorithm. So, but just for now, if I okay. So yeah, and okay. So and there is an algorithm. So first, I can find such age. It's not hard. It's also some Jacobian, Jacobian business. Then I pick random uh, point parameter space and compute the pre-image. So and okay. So there are two things: random point and computation of pre-image. For computation of pre-image, you can do any parameter algebra you want. Okay, stop. Close the door. Wait. For the computation of pre-image, you can use any polynomial computation technique currently we use Grobner basis. Uh, this uh, random point, uh, we did, did some analysis, so you can't guarantee any probability of success that you want, less than one. So, <laughs> so uh, for, by, based on the input data of degrees and orders and number of variables, you can compute some, some way of doing this random choice, that this result will be guaranteed to be correct with probability that you want, that you said. So it's not just speculation that will take something random. Yeah, yeah, it's not like high probability or you know, just say me you want 99%, I give you 99%. This is this is, this is a rigorous thing. And okay, just to finish this is an example, some chemical reaction, and this is okay, it's reasonably large. And if you set probability 99.9%. The algorithm says that everything is globally identifiable in one and a half minutes. So, and this is, you cannot, cannot deal with this with because of the wow. It just won't finish. So, and yeah, this is, this is I think, the end of the talk. That's, thank you for attention. Thank you. Questions? More questions? Um, huh? On the Go, could you go back to like two previous slides? Mm -hmm. uh, this one? Oh, sorry, one more preview. One more preview. So I'm a little confused. Aren't you still sort of computing an input output equation in the sense that you're taking derivatives and then you know plugging information back in? Isn't that I, I I don't eliminate x. But in this example, x was uh, y minus mu two. But you don't know mu two. Right, but but I'm saying that. Uh... Ah, I mean, okay. If you no, if you want, if you, you can replace x with y minus mu two here and get input output equation. But I don't do that. I, I do different thing. Okay, but I I I I, I, I don't uh, don't eliminate x's. I keep them all all, all the way. Okay. So, but you know, of course, in in any any method, you will differentiate some <laughs> some point, and there's. Subtle things okay. which want to do to that. Do you actually rule out any singularities because you talk about global uh, identifiability? Is that local? Pardon? The, uh, is your question uh, does global identifiability imply local? Or? Yeah, no. No, no. Okay. Um, I'm saying that in your calculations, because you are aiming at global identifiability, do you ever encounter any singularities? I mean, uh, okay, uh, maps that we uh, construct can have singularities. Yeah, but how do you handle it? <laughs> uh, in, in, in what sense? I mean, I, I, I compute the pre image. I, I, I don't need to think about singularities if I compute pre image of the point.
Okay, let, let me put other way. Uh, do you ask what will I do if my pre-image will touch the singularity? I avoid this with the high probability making enough, making right choice of trouble of the parameters. And I can compute this probability, okay. so. So one more quick question. Yeah, is there a quick question? Yes, no? Yeah. Okay, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you.